to today's video where we're going to be discussing Full and Station by Elizabeth Bishop. Second poem that we have discussed. Remember that this is a recap video. We've done the work in class. So just a, a quick recap when you uh, down the line for mocks or for your leave insert. You're just going to go back over it. Remember what the poem is about. Remember the poetic devices and just a little look at the themes. Okay, so we're just going to run through the poem. We're going to start with stanza one. Oh, but it is dirty. Okay, the exclamation mark shows this kind of a, a real condescending tone here that Elizabeth Bishop uses in the first uh, first line. It is dirty, this little filling station, oil soaked, oil permeated to a disturbing overall black translucency. Look at the imagery here, it's very dark, it's quite negative, everything's covered in oil, it's unhygienic, it's dirty. Okay, so in the initial, you remember this in the first stanza, she looked at it in a condescending way. She, she didn't like this little phone station. She was um, disgusted by it. But there's a kind of a, a little maternal instinct there. Be careful with that match. Also showing how much it's covered in oil that she's actually worried if someone struck a match, the place could go up. Okay, stanza two tells us a little bit about the people at the filling station. Father wears a dirty, oil-soaked monkey suit that cuts him under the arms. Now, the fact that his monkey suit so is like a mechanic, um, a uniform, okay, he's covered in oil, he's dirty. The word dirty again suggesting there's a negative connotation there with him. It cuts him under the arms, it's too small for him. Um, suggestion there that he's growing out of this, okay, that um, there's something missing, somebody hasn't told him this, and we'll come to that in a little while. And several quick and saucy and greasy sons assist him. Okay, the main, you look at the sibilance there, the S's. Okay, quick, several quick and saucy and greasy sons assist them. It's a family filling station, all quite thoroughly dirty, reinforcing the idea that everything in the station is dirty. Do they live in the station? There's a bit of a horror in her voice here when she says, do they live in the station? They possibly, they couldn't possibly live in this station. It's so dirty. It has a cement porch behind the pumps. And on it, a set of gr crushed and grease-impregnated wickerwork. Okay, so think of the way she's telling the story. She's creating these images so you can imagine what's happening the scene. She's setting the scene very, very clearly. There's a porch and a set of grease-impregnated wickerwork. If you've ever sat in wickerwork, you'll know that it's quite easy. First, uh, if you spilled something, it was quite through. So she's talking about the wickerwork. It is completely covered with grease. Now, here's where... It might little change a little change, you'll see. On the wicker sofa, a dirty dog, quite comfy. Now, look at the alliteration there. It's quite harsh. The DD is a very harsh sounding use of alliteration. The dirty dog, but he's quite comfy. And this signals a kind of a change in her uh, tone towards the filling station. Some comic books provide the only note of colour, of certain colour. A little bit of, of humour there. The comic book is the only thing that has kept its colour. And she uses a contrast there in terms of creating from the black that's surrounding it. The comic book are always bright colored. So there's a contrast there. The other thing is, it's the only thing we know that it's still the same color. Everything else has been um, dulled by the color of oil and grease. They lie upon a big dim doily, draping a tabaret, part of a set. Okay, so this uh, the incongruity of this um, a doily does not match the surroundings. This is where she starts to kind of get a little bit curious and things start to seem a bit mysterious. There's a doily used for underneath uh, a teapot. Beside a big, her sweet begonia. So there's a plant here too. Now, she starts using rhetorical questions here. Why the extraneous plant? This plant doesn't match. Why is it here? Why the tabaret? Why, oh, why the doily? Embroidered in daisy stitch with margarites, I think, and heavy with gray crochet. They don't match. They stand out. Why are they here? Somebody embroidered the doily. Somebody waters the plant or oils it maybe. Now, again, a little joke. They don't even water, they don't water the plant, they oil it. Okay, so somebody, and again, it's this somebody, there's someone here working or somebody did, maybe they're no longer with us, but the, the remains of their work is here. Okay, it goes on scene. Maybe it's a reflection on the work of mothers that are on scene. But if we look at Elizabeth Bishop's own life and the fact that, her parents weren't around maybe it's an indication of the fact that so people are still there with us even though they're not physically there so maybe the mother in this filling station is no longer there but the work that she has done still stays and there's a reminder of her throughout the filling station somebody arranges the rows of cans so that they softly say so 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 
So now contrast that use of sibilance, very soft alliteration with the dirty dog in the beginning. Her tone has changed. So somebody arranges the can rows of cans that they softly say so 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 to high strung automobiles. Somebody loves us all. And here is the crux of the poem. Somebody loves us all. Um, it's a bit like the prodigal made up his mind to go home and there was somebody there. He was he had a second chance. Elizabeth Bishop's telling us, telling the world that no matter how bad things get, somebody loves us all. Even in the this filling station where it's covered in grease, it's covered in oil, that somebody loves it enough to arrange the cans of Esso, to read that. Somebody arranges the plants. Somebody embroidered the doily. Okay, somebody loves us all. Poetic devices, the alliteration, the harsh D sounds and dirty dog, and then a softer use of sublance and S-O, so, so. Contrast, the comic book color with the black of the filling station. Also a lot of incredible imagery there. She's almost telling a story. There's a, there's a narrative voice throughout the poem, telling a story, building up images for you in your head. The theme, somebody loves us all. The message here is no matter what, there's always someone there to love us, even if they are not physically with us. Okay, so that can a lot of people can relate to that of have lost grandparents or parents or brothers and sisters that the, the reminder of them is there all the time and they know that their love is always with us. Don't judge a book by its cover is another message. Her initial thoughts of the following station changes when she sees how comfy the dog is and when she spots the incongruity of the doily and the begonia. And the point is there, she, she made a very initial, very harsh judgment on the following station without actually knowing anything about it and you'll see later on in the fish she has a similar change of heart appearance uh, appearances can be deceptive the dog is comfy there's nothing to suggest that the family aren't entirely comfortable with us they don't seem unhappy okay so that's just a quick recap on the filling station thank you